Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. We're going to check out this really sweet Daisy Beetle. And we also have a really nice update on the 2001 Jaguar S-Type that you guys just recently saw a video on. Let's get started. So before we get started, we actually got a box in the mail today. It's a gift from... I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Kova or Kowava Coffee. A guy named Brian sent us this box. It's like 20 bags of coffee. Here's a mug. It says Festivus for the rest of us. And it kind of looks like me on it. It looks a lot like you. They're, kind, they're our kind of guys. Yep. So there is tons and tons of very special blends of coffee. Very thankful for that. We'll definitely get those ground up and try them out. Thanks for sending these. Kova or Koava, however I pronounce it. Hopefully I'm not doing it wrong. So this is a 2006 Volkswagen Beetle. It has the 2.5 liter. We've actually worked on it before. It's a high school student's car, so no, it is not in immaculate condition. It's not a museum piece. You can definitely tell it's a high school person's car, which I don't have a problem with that because most people don't buy their high school child a museum piece to drive to school. We did some work on the convertible top. I think we actually did a video on it showing that we had it all apart. We got it working again. And it works great, but now it's back. It had an oil leak, it had a check engine light, and a few other issues. So we'll go ahead and get this bonnet opened up. Actually, Magic Mike diagnosed these problems. So it came in with a check engine light and a major oil leak. What did you find when you scanned the codes? So I found four different fault codes when I started looking at this Beetle. I found two fault codes for a mass airflow sensor and an intake air temperature sensor fault. Mm -hmm. And when I popped the hood, I found that the uh, cable had just been completely disconnected and was dangling over here by the brake fluid reservoir. Right. So once I was able to get that reinstalled, those two fault codes went away. That was quick and easy. Mm -hmm. I found two more fault codes. One of them was for an intake manifold air pressure sensor, and that was an open circuit fault code. The other fault code was for the EVAP leak detection pump, and that was also an open circuit. Right. For the intake manifold pressure sensor, I measured the internal resistance of the sensor, and I was able to find that it exceeded the specified values. Okay. So I knew that was just a sensor. So on the leak detection pump, we found out that that needed some work as well. Okay, so what he just mentioned a minute ago, the airflow sensor was unplugged. Those are one of the things when you're diagnosing, when you're getting to be a, a tech that's diagnosing cars, those things can throw you for a loop so fast. It's common knowledge amongst people who own cars that you go to start your car and then it dies on you. It might be your airflow sensor. You could try just unplugging it and it may come back alive and at least get you home. And that may be what happened here, even though the airflow sensor wasn't even bad. It ended up being the MAP sensor, which is pressure, not flow, but pressure. And we'll show that here in a minute where it's at. But he caught that in time. He plugged in the sensor and verified that that code went away. It would be easy for a shop to say, oh, you just need an airflow sensor and a map sensor, when really all they needed was just the map sensor. Let's go ahead and take a look around this engine bay. So here we have the bad manifold absolute pressure or map sensor. And I'll show you guys where that is located straight down my f below my flashlight, right below it, you can see it's mounted down there. Kind of difficult to get to. Wasn't too bad, but it wasn't fun either. This is commonly a confusion point for customers when it's a MAF sensor, which is an F, or MAP sensor with a P, and they're like, what's the difference? This customer didn't have any issues with that, but I frequently said your MAP sensor is bad, and they say, no, it's not, I already cleaned it. No, not your MAF sensor map like you're reading a map and they're like oh map i don't even know where that's at I, yeah i know so that ended up being bad like magic mike said he actually measured the readings right at the sensor and it proved to be bad we replaced it and the code went away it's happy there was a big oil leak on this car let me take this uh beauty cover off and i'll show you guys It ended up being the valve cover gasket, which was leaking all down the engine block there. It was completely just coated. When we lift the car up here in a minute, you'll see that we've cleaned the most that we can, but it really needs to be taken by the customer to a car wash and have the underside just really pressure washed really nicely. 
One thing that I noticed, even though the valve cover gasket was the culprit, we always like to check these Volkswagen engines for crankcase pressure or vacuum. And out of this little port right here was just, I mean, it was just a solid stream of air coming out. It ended up being that this diaphragm is bad inside of here. It was just cheaper to get an entire new valve cover. It came with a new gasket, a new diaphragm, everything all in one whack. It solved everything. The stream of air that was coming out is gone. The oil leak is gone. And very happy to report that it was a success with that. Here's the air flow sensor, not a pressure, but a flow sensor. This was unplugged and the wire was just laying down there. It's very easy to get in trouble as an entry level tech that's doing diagnosing or learning how to diagnose. There's a code for the airflow sensor. It needs a new sensor. No, it don't. You need to think about what customers do with their cars sometimes. Take a look. And we found that the wire was dangling. You see this big orange ring right here that is actually the oil dipstick. On these Volkswagen Audi cars, there should be one inch of vacuum or less. You can use that with a vacuum gauge and just actually just stick a hose in there if it seals right. This one was way over one inch and you can tell especially if you pull the dipstick out while it's running and if the idle just goes whoa whoa and starts doing weird stuff. You probably have an issue going on with your crankcase ventilation system. This is a very very common Volkswagen Audi issue. Like I said, when I found out there was the leak and the diaphragm, there's no sense fixing one or the other. We're just two birds with one stone on that deal. So map sensor fixed the code. Airflow sensor just needed to be plugged in. New valve cover, new diaphragm. And we also took care of the leak detection pump, got a new pump in there, and everything's taken care of. That code went away, it's working and functioning properly. We'll go ahead and take a look under this car and look around it. it like I said, it's not a museum piece, but for what it's meant for, it does, it does good. It's a nice little car. Let's get this thing in the air. So this car is missing its belly pan. You can see it actually has zip ties holding this together. And although it'd be nice to have the belly pan, it's not necessary. It's not needed for the operation of the car. You can see that we did clean up a little bit. It was completely wet under here with oil. We got most of it cleaned up, but it definitely could be taken to a car wash and have the customer just clean the underneath really well. But we can see our radiator here. And our condenser is nice and dry, nothing leaking there. Our hoses are nice and dry. Oil pan, everything else, it's been staying dry ever since we cleaned it off. Take a look over here. CV boot is good. Sway bar link is good. Brakes are about half gone, but they're still good. Nothing loose there. Brakes are half gone, CV boots are still good, sway bar link is tight, everything's tight there. All this oil you're seeing up in here is still residual from the valve cover. It had been leaking for a long time. It was just like uh, Niagara Falls of oil. It was just completely coated everywhere. So it definitely needs a trip to the car wash. So, a car wizard, what's this guy? I've not seen him on too many cars. Call it a torque strut or a torque mount. If I were to remove this and put the car into drive, the whole tr powertrain would swing back and forth on the motor mounts. This holds it solid. Its only job is to keep the rotation of the engine or the powertrain back and forth. That's all it does. It doesn't hold the engine up or anything. These are frequent to go out right here, and you put it into gear and I think clunks really bad, or you accelerate and let off the gas and there's a lot of play but this one's in good shape luckily here's our catalytic converter that everyone here in Wichita seems to be wanting to rob now especially the Priuses you remember the Prius Mrs. Wizard oh yeah that was a good little car we were hearing we heard one go by when we were out to eat in Wichita and it sounded like a tractor going by and I didn't know but Hoovy actually told me because we, we met up with him to eat that's common the Priuses are worth so much money, they're just hacking the, the catalytic converters off. 
what a weird world we live in. So anyways, you can see it had been leaking a long time. It was just coating the bottom of the car. Here's our muffler, resonator chamber. We'll go back here to the back wheels. Brakes are about half gone, but they're still good. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I don't even want to know. Here's our big suitcase muffler. I call it that because it's big and heavy as a suitcase. Here's a pine needle. You want a pine needle, Mrs. Wizard? Um, no, I'll let you keep that. Thanks. Brakes are good. Nothing's loose there. Shock. It may it has a little seepage. It may need a new shock at some point. This one is starting to seep as well. We'll let the customer know about it. But understandably so, the customer doesn't want to dump tons of money into this car. I, I wouldn't want to either. This is a high school kid's car. As long as it's safe, as long as it's doing what it's supposed to do and driving, you don't try to restore these cars. You just keep it functional. Tires look good. Good tread on them. With a high school kid's car, you worry about the tires, the safety, the drivability, things of that nature. So that they're safe and that they can get to and fro where they're going. The cosmetics, that's really not a huge concern. I don't even think most of the kids that have these cars even care. They just drive them. So let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. Richard, I am not joining you in the back seat of that car. No, we're too old for that. We don't do that anymore. And I don't think there's space for us both. No, I don't think there is. And the customer probably would not appreciate that in the slightest. But around here, the fabric had separated. There's a plastic ring that goes around. Ever since we got their convertible top working again, going back and forth several times, this finally worked loose. I was able to get in there and just glue it with glue put it back into the slot that it goes in and it's holding, it's holding very well. I've gone back and forth several times and now the fabric's not hanging down. Also on both sides, there's these little slider rings. The fabric had come off. So I got the fabric reattached and also glued that. And now it slides like it should, like normal. These were hanging way down to here, but now they're being, it's reattached. We've reattached it in a manner that it still works. It's not like brand new. It would probably cost over a thousand dollars to rework this entire convertible top. And, I'm, and I wouldn't be interested in doing that and I know the customer wouldn't be. So we got it functional again, that's what matters. Same thing over here, I reattached the fabric piece so it can slide back and forth. You can see it slides on the little rod there, but it's not hanging in people's face now. So that's functional again. The rest of it is in good shape. So we got that taken care of. I think I, I didn't quote them for 100, 150 bucks, just time to re-glue and, and reattach everything, half an hour to an hour. And that's ended up what it being about an hour. So that's all taken care of as well. So that took care of all the issues to make this thing functional again, get rid of the check engine light, everything else in decent shape. It's a good driver. We've been through this, Mrs. Wizard, haven't we? Our kids, their first cars. You don't buy them a 2012 Mustang or something really nice because they're probably going to destroy it anyway. Not that they intend to, but it's part of having kids. We, we gave our daughter a 2001 North Star V8 Cadillac DeVille. Yeah, it's one of the first ones I did that I did the head studs on and it was a total success. It was a really nice car when I gave it to the oldest daughter and her friends, and then they go around in it, and within, what, six months, it was trashed. It wasn't in its best shape. The interior was just roached out. It was a nice car before that, but I knew that was going to happen. I anticipated it was going to happen, just like that's what's probably happening here. Not, like I said, not that the kids intend to do that. That's just part of their growing up. They le they're learning things still. Speaking of learning things, you guys just seen on the previous video on the uh, Jaguar S-Type that was a complete sham job from a previous shop. The customer had told us not to pursue the coils and plugs, but ever since they watched the video and they seen some of the things that we found together, 
He actually called today and said, you know what, I changed my mind. Go ahead and do all the plugs and the coils and everything. So let's head on over to the S-Type. You like my ribs, Mrs. Wizard? They are impressive and dripping, actually. Yeah, that's coolant coming out of one of the little ports. It looks like RoboCop. Something. Anyways, this is the intake, upper intake, or the plenum, whatever you want to call it. Set it aside. And on this jack, we actually have all the coils and things out. We did a compression test just so we have the information for us to look at. All six cylinders are 175 to 180 PSI all across the board. Very strong compression, very good. So that's definitely not an issue. We also watch the injectors while cranking. You can see down in the throat now of each intake port. All of them have a nice fine spray, so it's not an injector issue. They're all working. But I want to show you guys these coils. Let's take a look. So supposedly these coils were replaced five or six weeks ago. Even though it sat there for five months. But you can see the dirt buildup in the coils. That doesn't happen in five weeks. This is years. And like I mentioned, they're all different brands and types. At some point these were replaced, but it was a long time ago. Here's some more of them. This, these were definitely not done five weeks ago. Here's one of the spark plugs that we pulled out. You can see a rust ring around, it's like a brown color. That wasn't replaced four weeks ago. So, it still had the misfire, very slight misfire when we had everything done. Now we get to dive in on this. We're going to put all new plugs, all new coils, new plenum gaskets. We know the injectors are working and we know the compression is good, so we'll have all those things behind us. Like I mentioned before, tune-ups can be very expensive, or I guess you don't call, we don't call them tune-ups anymore. But now that we got this massive intake out of the way, you can see these are where the coils were. On that side, they're easy to get to. On the passenger side, they are not. They are now because the intake's out of the way. Sometimes we get customers, like I've mentioned before, why does it take so long to change out plugs? Well, now you see. Some cars take quite a while. So there was one final last issue on this S-Type was the misfire, and I'm glad the customer allowed us to go ahead and solve that for him. We'll get this taken care of, and finally, all the issues will be done in one week. Not six months or five months. One week. And it wasn't even hard. I don't know, guys. Anyways, regardless of what's all the negative story with this car, I'm glad that we can get it fixed for the customer. We'll be a happy customer. We'll be a happy shop because we'll get a nice payday out of the deal. And that's what we're here for. I enjoy uh, making a customer happy, and I get paid. The next time a car breaks down one of their other cars they own, who are they going to call? They're going to call me. That's more business for me. And that's the way it should work, not robbing people all at one whack, knowing they probably won't return. So let's get everything we can all at once and charge them for things we didn't even do. I don't know. Not a very good business plan. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on the Daisy Beetle or the S-Type, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because I looked at the schedule and there's more cars coming in next week and the next week and a third week after that. So, more videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.